everybody. I hope you guys are having the most fantastic of fantastic weeks. It's been a pretty bright and shiny week here. Finally got everything moved out of my old place. Got to pay a visit to one of my favorite places in St. Louis, which is Bellefontaine Cemetery. Wednesday put a video out on that. Arguably one of the most beautiful videos I have ever shot. If you're into Victorian sculpture, art, architecture, and history, I think you're really going to love that video. So if you missed that, go check it out. All the footage you're seeing here is from that video. So again, we are at it with the Mansard Roof. So let's not waste any more time and get right to that. Thank you. 
What a beautiful sunset. But of course, that's not what we're here to talk about. So we're up here at the cornice, just about 40 feet in the air. You can see all the little special details up here. Like the dental molding. We've got the very beautiful freeze boards up here, which are looking pretty good now that I've got most of the paint off of them. You can see this piece here is missing. That piece, of course, being this piece here. Um, which you see that portrait still has some paint on it. Got all this cleaned off, except for this little bottom section. So very close to having this entire side of the mansard roof, which is just below the front door, which is right there. Almost done. Now let's back up really quickly. So let me describe and tell you guys how this all works. So we can see here, these are all the rafters, right? So if we look at these blocks here, these are the blocks that actually hold the cornice into the brick. As you can see, stone stops about right here-ish, directly under this little piece. I know because that section there, you can see where the stone, the top of it stops. It's a little piece of wood there to hold this bottom of the freeze and this last little piece of molding here at the bottom is a block of wood. And then it's all brick all the way up, except for these pockets. Now what's happened here is the mortar is given away around these boards and they've slid out this way. So that's the entire reason this area looks the way it does. Of course, this is caused by weather and uh, probably another <laughs> example of squirrels messing with stuff. Uh, as you can see, these rafter ends are pretty chewed up. And by chewed up, I mean literally chewed up. Uh, these are squirrel bite marks. Uh, they've done quite a number up here. Up here, you can see the copper gutter, uh, which is just kind of like a half like moon shape. You know, just a concaved uh, shape. No deep gutter on this, uh, which is what I expected when I first bought the place or first thought about doing anything like this. I thought it was a much deeper gutter, but it actually, no, it's pretty shallow. But here's what has to happen here to fix this. These wooden blocks here, which are eight or nine inches out of their pockets, need to be pushed back into their pockets. Uh, you can see here, this is actually the width of how far they're supposed to be out, about the size of my finger, so you know, four inches-ish. That one over there is probably getting close to a foot. As you can see there, it's way pulled out. If you look underneath too, you can see some of the brickwork is kind of loose and just needs a little bit of pointing and figuring out. So what's gonna have to happen is these boards here that make up the gutter, these are all gonna have to come out. These rafters, all gonna come out and be remade. This soffit board here, also gonna come out. It's way too rotten to keep. In fact, most all of them are, specifically because of how bad the ends are. So all that has to go. I'll probably keep this gutter up here just as a template for the time being. But at that point, I should be able to push each one of these back into their slots mortar it all back up, get it secure, locked in. Luckily, these joists are actually in pretty good shape. I don't see any wear or tear on them, really. And then we can start reattaching everything and rehanging this entire portion of the cornice, along with putting the corbels back. You can see where the corbels go. These two will be brand new ones. That one we're gonna be working on in just a second. So in the very near future, we'll go from something that looks like that to something that looks a lot more like that. Of course, again, all of this is getting replaced as well. So all that, anything above this little piece of trim here that kind of goes around it all, anything above that is getting removed and replaced. So expect that in the very near future. Oh, it's going to be so much nicer when this is all done. And yes, this area is looking worse almost every day. Some of that's kind of my fault though, because I've been taking this apart kind of slowly, trying to understand it, figure it all out. 
For those who haven't seen me strip anything before, this is what I use a lot of the time, especially for exterior stuff and stuff that's going to be painted because I don't care if it gets singed. This is a Cobra Speed Heater. It is an infrared paint stripper. It is absolutely amazing. But as you can see, some of the time lapses, this will kind of char your wood if you're not careful. And also when using any kind of heat source, doesn't matter what it is, there's always a risk of fire. And so you should be extremely careful And how I mitigate that. As you can see, this wonderful water hose down here. My hose is always, always attached to the basket. I always double check it. This is my one big safety device that I always have with me up there. You know, I'd rather forget the harness almost than uh, forget the hose. So very, very important that you have some kind of water while you're using something like the speed heater. Now let's go ahead and fix that super busted up corbel I was talking about earlier. wood filler, a lot of sanding, and a little love, this corbel's ready to be put back into service. Just as soon as I repair the rest of that mess that's going on in the cornice. So before us here on the desk lies some of my very favorite things. This is more or less my Holland Brown memorabilia collection. This set here is all Holland Brown catalogs. If we open one up, let's say this one, we get some of the amazing machines that these guys manufactured, some of which I own. For instance, here's my molder, which I will eventually use to make windows and trim. And also for those who watched the machine episode where I went and picked up all the machines, this is the logo on most of my newer Hall & Brown equipment. This was their newer logo versus their older logos. This is roughly 1892. 1904, and sometime in the 20s, probably, most likely for this book here. Also here, I have my Yerkes and Finan Woodworking Machine Company, which is also based in St. Louis. Yerkes himself actually came to St. Louis with both Hall and Brown. And he, while running this little machine company, was also the vice president of Hall and Brown. How that all works out, I'm not quite sure. 
Uh, but these guys weren't necessarily competitors. They were almost a sister company to Hall & Brown. This is the only Yerkes & Finan catalog I know to exist anywhere. Very, very rare item, this. This is a little Hall & Brown postcard uh, letting somebody know about their order. Um, this one was... This one is for a machine that was being sent to Texas in 1905. So another really cool item. These I've showed previously. These are from the Hall & Brown booth, the World's Fair. A guy named Albert Swinsky from Germany saw these cute little puzzles that make these little dollhouse furniture bits. Basically, there's just little chairs inside. I was very, very thrilled to find one of these. I cannot believe I found two of them. Pretty amazing. But the reason I show this whole spread to you guys today is because I found a new piece, and again, a piece I didn't know existed, I think is pretty amazing. So what this is, is a little paperweight. It is a replica of the Liberty Bell. The real one resides in Philadelphia. But this one, which this would normally be the front, it has all the markings the Liberty Bell would have on it. But if we go to the back, there you go. Hall & Brown Woodworking Machine Co. St. Louis, USA. Very, very odd little souvenir, and I'm not sure when it was made. I can find nothing about it. Again, this is one of those pieces. Maybe it's the only one that exists. I don't know. Uh, and I found this randomly on an estate sale online auction. Uh, I got it for $5, which is considerably less than I paid for any of this. Considerably less. And again, I, I don't know. It, it could be one of one now. Who knows how many of these things were made? Who knows how many of these things exist? Uh, but yeah, it just adds to... Uh, but yeah, it just adds to my collection here of really amazing things. I mean, again, I've gotten so lucky with all of this. I mean, basically the amount of items I've found are the exact amount of items that I've bought. You know, I am on eBay weekly trying to find these things. And here comes this little tiny bell that was in just a random sale that I randomly clicked on. So you would think like, you know, a woodworking company, right? Like, why would they make all these different products? The catalog, of course, sure, that makes sense. The ordered postcard, yeah, that makes sense. But a Liberty Bell, these little dollhouse puzzles, it's really unique and interesting. You know, maybe there were gifts that they sent out with the machines, I don't know. But I think when people get to come and visit, when I have things more put together and everything's kind of functional and working here, I'll be able to display a full picture, a full story of the company, of the man, of the house, all of it, and this neat little package. And I think it's so cool that I keep running across these really amazing little things. Again, it just makes a more complete story. And that's so intriguing and amazing to me. I mean, who else gets this opportunity? I, I feel so very fortunate to be able to find these things. And I'm... Um, and in some ways, maybe these little things are fortunate for me finding them because I get to tell the story. Who knew there would be so many items of this company scattered everywhere? And uh, I am more than happy to pick up the pieces and put the puzzle together. And so that little tiny Liberty Bell, just another small piece of the puzzle. I can't wait to find more. Who knows what this company made? <laughs> So that's going to do it for me this week, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. As always, thank you guys again for your support, for watching these videos. There are very few quick solutions in the world of restoring, and I'm very appreciative of you guys sticking with me. Don't worry, we'll get there together. So that's all, folks, and I'll see you guys again next week. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.